Jack Taylor produced the best figures of his one-day career of 4 for 38 as Gloucestershire fought back valiantly to beat Hampshire by 35 runs for their second successive victory in the Royal London One Day Cup, this win coming in front of their own fans in Bristol. Gloucestershire were put in under cloudy skies on a green pitch by Jimmy Adams at the toss, and it was soon looking like a good toss to win, even though Michael Klinger and Hamish Marshall opened up with a stand of 30 made in the first six and a half overs. Regular wickets then held their side back after Marshall on 15 edged Matt Coles' fifth ball of the day to Sean Irvin, who took the catch above his head at slip. Klinger was out to the last ball of the power play with a score on 45, James Tomlinson bowling him for 18. Tomlinson produced another perplexing delivery as far as the batsman was concerned to also disturb Ian Cobain's stumps as he went without scoring. That left the home side on 51 for three after a dozen overs and in the next ten and a half, Chris Dent tried to get the innings moving in the right direction with some neat shots as he had the better of a fourth wicket partnership with Will Tavaray, which was worth 48 runs. Dent top edged a sweep off Will Smith to go for 37 and then Irvin bowled Will Gidman off the inside edge for three. That left the Gloucesters on 103 for five after 24 overs and it looked as if they may even struggle to bat their overs out. Tavare helped them out enormously by producing the innings of the day on his List A debut. He especially enjoyed driving through the line off Irvin to keep the Hampshire bowlers at bay for 10 overs with Gareth Roderick. Within that time, Tavare, having an excellent debut season for the county, reached his 50 off 58 balls. He'd only struck four fours in that, but it was a knock which was holding this innings together. It proved to be invaluable to his team. The returning Roderick had made 13 when he was the latest to be bowled, this time by Danny Briggs, who'd now reduced the host to 145 for six in over number 34. So Tavare was now the key. He was playing with a maturity beyond his 24 years. He was eventually out for 77 with a faint nick off Chris Wood, which was well held by Adam Wheater standing up behind the stumps. Taylor came in and plugged the first and only six of the innings off Coles. But he was out next ball before Craig Miles was sent back by Benny Howell to be run out by Liam Dawson, leaving Gloucestershire nine down in the 46th over with 205 runs on the board. The fact that they managed to get to 233 was largely down to Howell, who excelled against his former county. He played some very clever shots to find the gaps to eventually take the innings down to the penultimate ball, making an undefeated 43 in the process. David Payne was out with one ball unused as he tried to scamper back for a second run to be beaten by Dawson's throw from the deep, but 233 all out was perhaps better than Gloucestershire would have been expecting at one stage. Hampshire, though, would certainly have fancied their chances of chasing that down, even without the services of Glenn Maxwell. With James Vince and Adams making a very good start, the target was one well within their reach. A number of boundaries were struck by the two openers, who both eased into their innings with some punishing shots. The 50 was up in the ninth over, although Adams was dropped behind by Roderick off Miles. It all seemed to be going Hampshire's way at this stage. The 10 overs of power play brought the visitors 59 runs and when Gidman was brought back on for the 11th over, Vince sent him to the boundary to take the total onto 65, the runs already coming at 6 per over. There was some light for the home side when, on 27, Vince nicked off to Gidman, Roderick holding on this time behind the stumps. Wheater came in at number 3 and tried to play the Maxwell role. He stepped down the pitch to launch Gidman for a maximum. One he followed up five overs later off Howell, the ball heading towards the new flats at this Neville Road ground. After 19 overs, the score read 99 for one, but then Adams on 48 gave Taylor the first of his four wickets as the spinner trapped the batsman in front with his very first delivery. 21 runs later and Wheater chipped the same bowler to Marshall at long on as the batsman departed for 30 at 120 for 3. Gloucestershire were just about keeping themselves in touch but Smith worked the ball around really well. 
utilising some smart shots as the target was brought down to just 84 of 97 balls. It looked as if the visitors were going to ease to their second victory in a row. Even when Irvin was needlessly run out by Tabare for 23, there didn't seem any way back for Gloucestershire. Although they were boosted just three balls later when Coles was bowled by Howell to go for a golden duck. 20 runs came off the next 31 deliveries before another run out set Hampshire back. Dawson was sent back by Smith and beaten by Dent's throw. Then, would you believe it, 18-year-old debutant Tom Olsop was also run out for a duck. At the non-striker's end, Smith must have been wondering what on earth was going on. A third wicket in three overs followed as Wood picked the wrong length to sweep and was LBW to Taylor. It was almost suicidal for the visitors who lost a sixth wicket for 38 runs in 11 overs when Briggs had a swing at Gidman and missed to go with his side in a mess. On 188 for 9, 46 now needed of the final five overs. Hampshire's only hope was now left with Smith. He helped this ball from Gidman over the rope for a six. Before, with 36 wanted off three overs, he was the seventh man of the match to be bowled as Taylor ended with career best figures of four for 38 to send his side to a surprising victory in a tournament which has already been filled with them. Smith was out for 47 as Hampshire were dismissed for 198 to lose by 35 runs. They may wonder how they managed to lose a game that was there for the taking. It was like turning the clock back 15 years for Gloucestershire, who moved to the top of Group A with two wins from three. They continue on their road to Lords against Leicestershire at home next Tuesday, while Hampshire play the same opposition at home the day after.